Hello everyone, this is Tom from Los Angeles. I hope you're doing well. I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about Canto 12 of uh, Inferno of Dante Alighieri um, with uh, the beautiful background of uh, songbirds that are really perfect for a discussion about Inferno. Canto number 12 is actually um, near and dear to my heart uh, for some reasons. Um, the main reason is that it contains uh, the name of the town where I was born and I grew up, which is Trento in the north of Italy. And uh, it's also including, for a coincidence, a mention of the Thames, River Thames in London. Uh, London where I also lived for a few years during my life. So it's uh, mentioning uh, places that uh, are really dear to me and uh, I, I like to hear this as part of the Divine Comedy. On the other hand, there's uh, um, a lot of blood in this canto. It's, uh, it's a canto that is infused with blood, is dripping with blood, and uh, it's almost like a, a horror movie, really. So we're gonna take it step by step and, uh, and see what Dante is trying to tell us. The very beginning sees uh, Virgil and Dante um, walking down the, the edge of the seventh circle and this is where Dante sees a landslide and uh, this landslide is reminding him to his eyes which makes us think that he might have seen the place in person uh, he reminds him of this uh, place very near uh, Trento my town in uh, in Italy where uh, in fact even still today there is a, a sign that um, says with with the actual Dante Terzina, or at least a couple of lines. Qual è quella ruina che nel fianco di qua da Trento l'Adice percosse? Adice being the main river that cuts the valley of Trento. Trento is a very beautiful little town in the north of Italy, very close to the Alps. And uh, that's why um, Dante refers to the landslide and to the area with the adjective alpestro, which is really alp-like, alp-like. And uh, in Trento, um, by coincidence, but also there are so many different um, monuments uh, dedicated to Dante all throughout Italy. But in Trento in particular, there is a, a really beautiful uh, tall monument that I'm gonna show here that represents uh, not only Dante, but the entire Divine Comedy in three different layers. It's beautiful because it has a, a really beautiful minus at the bottom with his uh, uh, retorted tail. And, uh, and then going up, you can see uh, um, Dante and Virgil in Purgatory. And uh, um, higher up, there's Beatrice. And, and Dante on top uh, holding the Divine Comedy. This is a monument that was uh, uh, built uh, towards the end of the 19th century and uh, it still is in this uh, little square or park that's called uh, Dante Square or Piazza Dante. As Virgil and Dante walk down this uh, landslide, the first thing they see is that on the edge the Minotaur is resting. This monster that for Dante is not even clear if uh, he was picturing the Minotaur, the Minotaur or Minotaur as uh, a bull-headed man or the opposite, a uh, body of a bull and uh, top of a man. But in any case this is the Minotaur who was the monster born um, of Pasiphae who was the wife of Minos and who, according to tradition, fell in love with uh, the most beautiful white bull in uh, Crete. And uh, she asked for a fake bull to be, a fake cow to be built so that she could get inside the cow and be fertilized by the bull. And that's uh, how the monitor was born. Mm. It's a very famous um, myth of course that has to do a lot with the political relationships between Athens and Crete. In any case the monster here is representing 
um, again, anger, wrath, and violence all together. As soon as he sees them, he bites himself in, a, in rage, which reminds us of uh, Philippe Argenti. This uh, uh, gesture of biting yourself uh, with uh, that we saw um, in Dante that represents anger really tells us the worst victim of uh, your own anger and your own violence as well, uh, your own anger and wrath, is yourself. You are uh, directing a very negative energy uh, on yourself and, and doing a lot of damage to yourself. In fact, uh, uh, Dante says uh, he beat himself si come quei cui lira dentro fiacca, which uh, Pinsky translates as he beat himself in rage like one insane. Uh, but if we want to be literal, the meaning of this is uh, he beat himself like the ones who are weakened by their own anger. So that's really the meaning that Dante wants to, to bring. Um, here it's uh, really interesting how Virgil intervenes and as the wise master that he is, he knows exactly how to handle the monitor. Not only with a quick formula this time, but uh, pushing his buttons. That's exactly what Virgil is doing, he's pushing the monitor's button, he's making him even angrier on purpose so that he will let uh, Virgil and Dante go by. And in order to make him angry, he talks about uh, the Duke of Athens, uh, Theseus, who actually killed the Minotaur. Uh, perhaps you think you see the Duke of Athens, the one who dealt you death up in the world. Beast, take yourself away, this is no man your sister taught. The Minotaur sister was uh, Ariadne, who, um, who was the legitimate uh, daughter and, um, of, of, of Pasiva and Minos. All of a sudden, the, as a bull breaks loose in the death blow aftermath and plunges back and forth, the Minotaur starts jumping around. And this is where uh, many commentators have uh, thought and still think that maybe Dante is thinking of a a, a body of a bull because he's jumping around like a, like a bull. It's not completely clear. Another fascinating aspect of uh, uh, Canto 12 is how, if you already read it, uh, you notice that Dante doesn't speak, doesn't utter one word for the entirety of the canto, which is in, in part uh, almost funny if we think how much has been scolded in the previous canto by Virgil for because he had these questions that he raised and both times Virgil told him these are not very smart questions at all. Uh, but also signifies that in, uh, in a particular, that Dante is going in a particular direction, he's going in, uh, in, a, in a direction of spiritual growth. The pilgrim is already understanding, he's growing, thanks to Virgil especially, and he's understanding that uh, uh, the right that he has to ask the right questions and sometimes uh, Virgil will already understand what he's thinking and sometimes he needs to be more patient in his anxiety to try to understand everything. So while the while the monitor is jumping around uh, Virgil and Dante can sneak by and uh, Dante is looking at the landslide and thinking to himself what he's thinking is how is it possible that there is a landslide here in hell where everything is eternal and uh, unmoving. So I thought to my, while I was climbing down, I thought to myself, and soon my master said, you may be thinking about this ruined terrain, which is exactly almost a telepathy from Virgil's, guarded by the feral rage that I defied and quelled just now. Know then, that other time I journeyed here, this rock has, had not yet slid. Virgil is referring to this other time that Dante already referred to uh, a couple of cantos before, where he came down with the Sibyl in, uh, in hell. Um, it must have been a little before he came to this, if I have reckoned rightly, to take the great spoil of the upper circle with him. He's referring basically to the uh, time uh, that was a little bit before, um, a little before Jesus came to the city of this to um, save some of the pre-Christian prophets and bring them to, to heaven. 
So I've also heard uh, some comments uh, or read some comments about this portion that say, say that uh, um, this <clears throat> uh, earthquake, the deep fated valley began to shake, um, was caused by, in effect, by Jesus' descent, Jesus' descent into hell. But really, what Dante is saying, and it's pretty clear, um, is that it was a little bit before that moment, and therefore, in uh, in the moment of the of Jesus' crucifixion and death, is in that moment that there was this massive earthquake, and uh, as a consequence, the, all the earth shook, and even in uh, hell, some pieces uh, crumbled down. We will see, uh, for example, another rock bridge being um, fallen in a few cantos ahead as well. So he's referring to this, uh, to this uh, uh, fact. When the deep fatty valley began to shake, so that I thought the universe felt love, the force that has brought chaos back. It's a line that sounds strange the first time, sounded strange the first time I read it at least, but it's uh, uh, clearly referring to the doctrine of Empedocles, the Greek philo philosopher. Um, Empedocles said that uh, Empedocles had uh, theorized um, the existence of the, uh, the four elements, even if he didn't really call them elements, and uh, the fact that uh, strife and love would, uh, because of their contrasting energies, would periodically take charge, and uh, when strife was uh, uh, taking charge, these elements were separated from each other. When love took charge, everything was uh, melted together and therefore chaos would, uh, would reign. As uh, outlandish <laughs> as it sounds today, this theory, um, that's what Virgil um, probably believed back then and uh, it's uh, very subtle how Dante uh, has Virgil say, uh, this is what I, what I thought back then. Um, because some philosophers say uh, in, in quel punto la vecchia roccia tal fe riverso in the Italian version uh, it's a bit more clearly uh, spelled out it says I pensai, Virgil thought because back then there was the only thing that he could, he could think it's only after having died and being held that he can understand the structure of, of the world in a sense so from here, from this point, they look down, even lower, and in the darkness there is this famous river of blood, of boiling blood, the phlegeton, phlegetonte, that will be actually named in the 14th canto. This is where uh, people who committed violence against others are boiling, are getting boiled, at different levels, which is a very grotesque and very almost comedic, if, I would say tragic comedic type of image. Different levels of uh, violence and different levels of uh, boiling blood that you are uh, in. This is the perfect contrapasso for people who um, made a point of their life. This is very different from uh, wrath, by the way, because that was about anger, wrath. This is people who in their life, they dedicated themselves to hurting other people. With a particularly, uh, with a particular um, willingness and sometimes even pleasure for violence. Their contrapasso punishment is not only to be um, boiling in this in this river of blood, but also to be um, guarded by uh, hundreds of centaurs who are um, throwing arrows at them. Uh, in case they disobey their orders, which is to remain in their positions. And uh, these centaurs are uh, a really interesting type of uh, uh, infernal monster or creature or, or demon, because they're all demons uh, within the Christian framework. But they are interesting because they are the only demon in Inferno who has a, a degree of uh, uh, some possibility of uh, uh, transcending their uh, beastly and demonic nature. 
Uh, and that's uh, uh, in the visually very well represented by the fact that they are split. They're half man and half beast. And this is why in the canto Dante uh, a couple of times uh, uh, focuses, zooms in the, the, the part of their body where the human portion unites and uh, connects with the horse body. The leader of these centaurs is Chiron. He, uh, in the mythology, he was actually um, such a wise and noble centaur who, uh, that he was um, the one who actually trained uh, uh, Achilles. And so he is uh, uh, head of this uh, group of centaurs. Um, some other centaurs that are mentioned are uh, Nessus, who met death through fair Deianira, Deianira's Hercules' wife, um, Nessus tried to kidnap her or rape her and uh, Hercules killed him but before Nessus died he gave his poisoned shirt to Deianira and the story says that uh, um, once he gave him this gave her this shirt uh, Deianira was supposed to use it and give it to Hercules uh, whenever Hercules wanted to um, go with another woman. That's actually what happened uh, and the Deonida gave Hercules the poison shirt without really knowing what would have happened and uh, in the end even if he was immortal uh, this shirt is what caused Hercules death in the end. But uh, Chiron uh, expresses this uh, half-human nature also in the gestures that he uh, makes and also what he says, but the gestures as well. There's this uh, gesture of uh, drawing an arrow's notch back through the tangle of beard along his jaw to clear a space for his large mouth, which is an obviously non-animal type of gesture, and, uh, and also uh, nobilitates the character as well. So he is uh, asking Nessus to help uh, Dante and Virgil uh, cross the river. From a practical point of view, Dante needs uh, help crossing the river because he, he doesn't want to get boiled in the boiling blood. Virgil tells him that he could, he, that he wouldn't have any problem going through it, but Dante does. In uh, crossing the Flagiton, uh, Dante and Virgil see uh, ten people, and Dante mentions them all. It's two ancient Greeks, uh, two ancient Romans. Uh, uh, a few contemporaries or Dante or maybe just a little earlier the usual Dante's organized way to present people but I'm not gonna spell them out all of them I'm only going to uh, make a note about uh, this uh, uh, person that is boiled in the boiling blood aside from everybody else he showed us uh, one who kept off to one side within the bosom of God he stabbed another's heart and it has dripped blood ever since upon the Thames this is the mention of River Thames, because um, this is a historic fact where, uh, in fact, uh, Mark Musa spells it out really, really well here. In uh, 1272, during Holy Mass at the church in Viterbo, Guy de Montfort, uh, one, of the, one of Charles and Jews emissaries, in order to avenge his father's death at the hands of Edward I, King of England, stabbed to death the latter's cousin, uh, Prince Henry, son of Richard, Earl of Cornwall. So this was a, a terrible murder that everybody knew about because it had happened in a church in front of uh, all the priests, etc. And according to a chronicler, uh, Henry's heart was placed in a golden cup above a column at the head of London Bridge. And because the murder has been unavenged, has remained non, not avenged. Uh, it's still, by the legend, dripping blood above the Thames. So the, the murder not having been avenged, that's why the, his heart is still, uh, is still bleeding. There's a lot of blood in this, in this canto. In any case, um, it's, a, it's a very strong, um, it's a very strong contrapasso punishment for uh, the violent against others and uh, it's a it's a very precise precise type of punishment um, 
fascinating fact, the fact that Dante doesn't really talk, but he's growing, he's uh, evolving spiritually. And uh, the fact that uh, um, he's uh, starting to probably understand as uh, Dante the Pilgrim, uh, his mission and uh, his own reason to be on this journey. Thank you all. Thank you for watching. Um, let's uh, move on to Canto 13. And uh, thanks as always. I really, really appreciate your your questions or comments. And if, if it's the first time that you watch these uh, videos, this series on the Divine Comedy, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.